welcome to Adobe Live. I am really excited to have you here. This is a new series called Transformation Mondays, and it's hosted by me, by yours truly, Sin Lagos. If you haven't already, jump on the chat and let me know where you're joining from. I'm joining you from Austin, Texas. The heat, the heat in Austin, Texas ran out, y'all, but there's a lot of really cool springs, so you're welcome to visit. All right, let's check out the chat. We have Oliver. Hi, Oliver. We have Umacorn, Katarina, we have Wade, hey Wade, joining from Jackson and Ryan joining from Brooklyn. Super awesome. Awesome. All right. All right. So again, my name is Sin Lagos. I'm going to go through a little bit of an intro here for those of you who don't know uh, who I am or what I do yet. Let's do a nice little intro for us. All right, so let's get to know each other. My name is, again, Sin Lagos. I love focusing on the spaces of graphic design, photography, and film. Those are some of my favorite spaces to explore and specifically to teach as a visual mentor here on live streams and also in other places on the interwebs. So definitely check out my website. It's a space I love being able to keep up with really cool resources whenever possible because um, I love sharing the wealth, right? So let me show you here real quick. All right, there you go. Had to refresh that. Okay. So check out my website where I have a bit of um, an insider on my journey as an Adobe Creative resident uh, up until now, which is so, so amazing. Actually looking back into it, I don't know if you guys ever step into that zone of like, all right, let me look at my timeline and let's see how this has gone. I mean, we're hitting the six month mark of the year. So this is a great time, I think, to celebrate our milestones, whether from this, pa this past six months or the entire entirety of our careers. Pretty, really cool, right? So in here, the reason why I like showing my website, I like to keep up the resources for y'all who are learning, who are here to educate yourself and uh, fulfill um, a dream of becoming a visual creator. Uh, I know there's a lot of folk in here who have been keeping up with the online education that we provide here on Adobe Live. And in this section in um, sinlagos.com slash classes, I keep you up with any streams that are coming up, but also any past streams that we've been able to dedicate here on Adobe Live. Um, around different ecosystems of the Adobe family of really cool uh, apps. So we have Illustrator, we have an entire set for Photoshop, and um, the one that we're gonna be talking about today is Adobe Express. So I'm really excited because Adobe Express has undergone a really cool revamp uh, since um, I think a few weeks ago. So it's kind of awesome because it looks vastly different. So let's jump in here. And before we do that, I'm going to show you a little quick uh, thing here that I like doing. So Adobe Express, who's it for? I think that's a big question that as a creator, I've found myself needing to answer. So I've been a creator for over now 10 years, which is mind boggling. I don't know, don't ask me. I don't know how I feel about it yet. Uh, but yes, it's so cool to be introduced to new applications, some of which I have to make up my mind. Do I wanna adapt myself to this new application or do I want to hone in my skill sets and others over this one? So Adobe Express had, uh, was that was a very predominant question I had for Adobe Express. It turns out Adobe Express is really good for established creators as well as beginners, folks who are aspiring to be digital creators in our new world of highly demanding digital assets, right? So I'm showing you my uh, Instagram here for a second for a reason. So really important, I find myself often using Adobe Express to create quick assets for my social expression. So this is important for me because I freelance quite a lot. I am a one person 
uh, creator, really, I'm sure you can relate. There's a lot of us who occupy a lot of uh, different hats, right? So one of them is social media marketing. And some of us love it. And some of us are like, wow, it can be really daunting. There's a lot of high demand, high output. Well, I've found a really cool workflow in Transformation Mondays. We're here to transform your skill sets, but also your workflow, right? So in my workflow, introducing Adobe Express as, as an established creator has meant that it can speed up creating assets like this, like being able to create things for my social media. So videos and thumbnails, things that look really crafted. This one I just posted, we're gonna learn how to create this specific one. And you're probably asking yourself, wait, hold on, son. You mean we're gonna learn how to create video on Adobe Express? Yes, it's, it's really, really cool. I think I'm most excited about this new feature, but there's a lot of really cool things going on in Adobe Express. But yeah, overall, I found it really, really helpful to just improve my workflow. So ask yourself that question. Ask yourself if you're in, you're in just starting as a digital creator or if you're an established creator, how you can retrofit your workflow introducing Adobe Express. And hopefully some of the things we're going to explore today are going to inspire you to develop those skill sets. All right, so let's dive into Adobe Express and I am on Adobe Express beta. So that's really important if you haven't joined yet. Um, hopefully we have uh, a link here that, that Voodoo Val is gonna provide. Thank you Voodoo Val for all the helpful links. And um, you want to join Adobe Express beta first. So this is gonna have the most up-to-date new features that we're gonna be exploring here today. And more specifically, um, I find that it's really cool to jump into any beta apps because you are going to be first at a lot of things and things are in the works and you get to give feedback and it's really, really cool. All right, so right away, you might notice that we have our Adobe Express open and it looks rather different. So it's gotten quite an upgrade in the UI as much as many other features. So you can see here, we have all of our quick actions, a bit more robust than when what we had before. We have all of these quick actions for Instagram posts, for flyers, Instagram stories, TikTok videos. So you can already sort of assess that this is a great space for social media marketing because it's very catered to all of those different assets that we often require for us to be able to be in different uh, platforms if you multiply yourself in that way. So also in here, you might see a really, really cool feature, which is the text to image and text effects. So as you may uh, be familiar with, Adobe Firefly has driven a lot of new updates to Photoshop, Photoshop beta, and now it's come into Adobe Express. So we're able to use the power of Adobe Firefly and its AI machine learning capabilities within our Adobe Express workflow, which I think is really, really cool. Let's see here. Awesome. Momocorn has a surprise phase. I'm ho hoping this is already exciting. And um, <laughs> Katarina said, excellent pronunciation of my name. Oh, I'm so glad. Usually I'm not that good at those, but you know, once in a while we nail it. All right. So right here, I want to show you how we create that particular uh, post that I just created here. So you can see here how it develops. Now I recorded this on my phone pretty easily and all of these assets I was able to manipulate and uh, make them my own in Adobe Express. And already I want you to think about, well, how did she do that? I wonder how she came about that, right? Um, maybe you have already a workflow in mind of how you would accomplish this. This for me has been a new introduction to how I usually do it. So I'm going to go in here into upload media. And the reason why is because I actually have a new uh, capability here in upload media. I'm going to go into transformation Mondays, go into my assets 
And I have, let's see, in here, social promo, cool. So I created a social promo prior to this in Photoshop. So my previous workflow as a creator has been um, to create artboards and really cool uh, social templates on Photoshop, in Photoshop, which I really enjoy. I really enjoy that workflow. But now you can actually import PDFs and PSDs, and I believe Illustrator files, I'm not sure about that, that third one, but I've been using PSDs quite a lot. So if you have, like me, established templates and you wanna repurpose them within Adobe Express, you can actually import a PSD. So let's do that. I'm gonna import this PSD. And it's already telling me I'm evaluating your life. It's a little sassy, right? So it's gonna import these files and hopefully it brings in all of my layers. You know, this is Adobe Express Beta. So I'm hoping for the best, but I also understand there's developments here. And I think it's important to, to know and be part of that. Uh, so I like this particular process because for me, Having to change my workflow can sometimes feel really daunting and a bit uh, overwhelming. If So I'll kind of stick with what I know. But I know that in this industry, it's so, so vital um, to stay in the know and evolve along with the industry. And if we all know, if you've been keeping up with everything we've been learning here, uh, the industry is changing quite a lot, right? Really rapidly. So I think it's important that we transform our workflows along the way. So you can see here, it imported my assets. It even imported something, I guess, a layer that I had turned off here, I, here on the edge. You can see all of the different files being being able to be manipulated if, we, if I want to move those around. Let's say I have a background there. And this is that file that I want to, Mondays. All right, so you can see there that file, I think it was turned off and it still honored it. It still knew that that was a layer that was within uh, my, my PSD file. So you can see all of those layers here. So awesome, right? I find it to be so, so cool. Like it's not something I, I asked for, but I guess I dreamed about it for a second there. I was like, there's no way that that would probably be too complicated. But you know, they, they make it happen. So I'm gonna remove this Mondays because we're not going to need that. Let's see, where are you Mondays? Okay, let's access it through our layers here. Delete that, cool. And we're live folks, so if you have questions about this, or if you have thoughts about Adobe Express and whether you're interested in, in um, implementing this in your design, definitely share it with me. I'm curious to know what you think about it if you're starting in your design journey or if you're already pretty established and you have a favorite app. You know, I've, I have like so many favorite apps, it's kind of hard to pick to be honest. But okay, so here you can see I'm able to manipulate my files. I'm able to increase the size. Um, I'm able to remove, delete, and move around my layout design too, right? So I can continue to modify these assets as I've already um, sort of established a bit of a, a layout in Photoshop, but if I want to modify anything, I have all the independent layers here. Like I kind of like this asset here, kind of on the edge. And I think that looks a little bit more balanced, right? So one of the things that I found important within uh, Adobe Express was the incorporation of uh, Adobe Firefly. So we're going to go in here, we're going to select this background file. And I'm actually going to remove that background really quick. Okay, so that was my own asset. That makes sense. It's not going to remove it. All right, so let's go in here. Let's just delete that for now. And we're going to go into our media. And under media, you're going to notice something new. We have within media, we have photos, which we had before. And we have now video, super cool. We even have audio, that's pretty amazing, right? Like I know we all kind of experience social media now through 
uh, a lot of video formats. So it's really cool that they're taking that into account. And so we're going to go in here and find this particular button here. It says text to images. And I'm going to go in here and select an image size. So I'm going to select maybe portrait for now just to see how that would look. Let's increase this. Right. And I'm going to select a new background. So I want to maybe include something with light flares. So when it comes to prompt generation, we learned a couple of things here on live streams before, but um, a few pro tips, definitely focus on just telling it to uh, create nouns and maybe some descriptors, some descriptors, but don't uh, include any instructions like place this or put that there. Just let's include the nouns. So for example, I might say a color, so purple, and I might say something like light flares. So I'm thinking of in creating my own background with text to images. Purple light flares, maybe I can include a style. So abstract. Gosh, I'm much better at designing than typing. All right, so abstract. And I'm gonna make one last selection here, which is include digital art. So that, that output is gonna be more of that digitized uh, aesthetic. And we're gonna increase this just a little bit and hit generate. All right, as we're waiting for that, oh, hi, hi, Annika, awesome. So as we're waiting for that, we want to be able to create one of the ways, oh, that looks awesome. One of the ways that I like to use text to images is to create textures or backgrounds, things that I usually would have to search the web for or search stock imagery for, which I still do. I like to keep my library there. This is a place where I can maybe originate something completely new, completely different in a matter of just a few words. And that already looks really cool. Let's see which other one. We have four options here. We have this one and this one. Let's see. It's really, really interesting how it decided to take that on. So I said purple, light, flares, abstract. And let's send that to back and bring our assets forward. Cool. Now, what's interesting about this text to image output is that we still have the capabilities of manipulating it. So it's not set in place. It's not like it's uh, set in stone. We can still affect it with effects, right? So we want to change that color palette, those hues with a bit of that gradient, which by the way, those duotone, duotone gradients can be customized with your own selection of colors, right? If you select a different color here, you can do that. Let's say I want to select the color around here. I can do this, right? So now that becomes abstract and that's part of my texture. There I can also select a different color here, maybe this one. All right, I think I like that one the most, yeah. All right, so let's go into adjustments and I'm able to continue to adjust this text to image output and um, affect the lighting. So something like a contrast, maybe a bit lower on the brightness so I can see those light flares a bit more. The highlights can be up and then maybe a little bit warmer on the color palette. And if I wanted to blur it so my image actually shows a little bit more predominantly, I can do that too, but I actually like the way it looks in this way. I right, wanna sharpen it, we can do that as well. So I think that's really helpful that I can still manipulate this image. It's not, uh, even though it's generated uh, via AI, it doesn't mean I can't continue to make it my own. Okay, so now I have my, my tailored, customized uh, background and I have it made to the color palette that I like. Cool. So. Let's go into animation. So within Adobe Express, we've been able to create animations before, but before we were pretty, uh, 
I would say pretty limited to two things. Either we animated the text or we animated the images and it was one or the other, which was cool, but pretty limited in my opinion. So I found it, um, I found that I would use it not, not as often uh, because I like being able to do a lot of uh, animation. So I will find myself in Photoshop. That's, that's sort of my, my train of thought. I wanna be able to animate more. Well, now you can animate more. We can animate all of these assets independently if we want to, which is so cool. So let me show you a little bit of what that would look like. So we would go into animation. Let's jump into the animation here. And we get these three buttons. We have in, looping, and out. So in meaning how it's going to be introduced, uh, out, uh, the usual animations for out, outros, and looping is gonna continue happening as long as the, the scene, throughout the scene's duration. So let's try uh, in here to see what we have. So we have bungee, and we have a, a pretty quick preview there. You can see right away what that looks like. We have grow. Flicker is a little intense, okay. We have rise. Shrink. I gotta say tumble is one of my favorites. <laughs> We have spin. Now, you might want to consider what fits best for something like a background. So I think something like a background doesn't deserve to be too intense. I might go into the introduction here and let's get maybe fade. I think I like that drop version. Let's do drop, all right. And we can set the duration. We can say how long that's going to take. Is it going to be faster? And I think faster is better in this case. And you can even choose the direction. So is it going to come from below, from the left, the right, or from the top? I think knowing that that's my background, I want to also animate this uh, color hue that I got going on here in the foreground. And I'm going to go into animation in the same fashion and choose, and I think that's gonna be helpful to make them feel like they're a unit. So I can choose maybe fade, so it fades in. It can also just sort of rise from below, like a sunrise. Maybe it just bounces in, which is kind of cool. I think I'm gonna use rise, and you can see the duration here of how fast I make it. And choosing this play button, we can see how it plays together. And we're gonna talk about how that can be manipulated if we wanna change when one comes, if one comes before the other, we're gonna, we're gonna get there. Let's edit a few of these along the way and see how many different animations we can explore. Okay, so for this one, I think this animation here, I want to go into looping and maybe I want something like a spin. So press play. That's pretty cool, I like that. Let's go into the star. Actually, the star would be a perfect spin, right? So let's go into the star. Looping, you can do spin on the star and remove this one. Let's change it to maybe a grow. I think grow would look really cool. So let's play that again. Super cool, right? Then it, it, it even has these options. So what kind of personality do you want your animation to have? It's a really cool term to use. So this is usually how it uh, appears, whether it's like really rough or it's, it eases in. Uh, so it gives you a few options here, soft, smooth, strong, energetic, or loud. So how much attention grabbing uh, of an animation do you want within your graphic is essentially what it's asking. But it's a really interesting introduction for those who are just learning about um, uh, animation, right? You might not have jumped into a, a robust vid video editing uh, program, and that's okay. All of these apps are gateways. They're, all, they're almost like segues, I would say, into these, these spaces of, that you can, 
you know, further learn um, in, within your career. So for me, applications on my phone have been great introductions, like intro, true introductions to uh, animations. Um, animation in Photoshop was an introduction to animation before I jumped into the most robust, the more robust uh, After Effects. So definitely keep that in mind. Like what is going on here and, and consider how all of this can be potentially a clue to the ecosystems in uh, other applications within Adobe. So let's animate our intro here. So I think I'm gonna animate this intro to something like a fade in. I think I, the, well, yeah, that looks really cool. <laughs> so I'm like, let's just do a fade in, but then I see an animation that is so awesome. All right, let's do a fade on Monday, right? So you don't, uh, I think a pro tip here with just having a sense of aesthetic is you don't wanna place all of your animations in kind of this, um, that same per personality. You want some of them to enter a little bit softer and some of them, some of them especially at the start, to be really attention callers. So let's introduce this image here. So as you notice, we have been animating text and images all at the same time. So we're not limited to doing one or the other, which I think is really cool. Um, in essence, is what I've been wanting to do and what kept me from using Adobe Express as a whole. I think having this makes it feel a little bit more professional, right? A little bit more intentional. And I love that they've introduced this as a new, uh, an updated feature in, a, in Adobe Express beta. So let's use the eye here. I'm gonna adjust this. I think the eye is not as visible. So actually I'm gonna adjust the effects. And you can see the duotone gives me a few options here that I can play along with. Maybe something like that looks cool. Mm, that one looks a little bit weird. Let's choose our own color palette. Yeah, maybe like that. And then the little, the little color or vice versa. And let's go and animate it. Let's do a looping for this one. I think the spin is really cool. Let's do this wiggle one. It just moves slightly. Or the yo-yo is kind of cool. It just bounces up and down. Nice. So, so far, let's play it from the start to see how they are coming together. That's really awesome. So, as you notice, the ones that we have animated as an in, right, in our, in our in section. Okay, let me go back here to animation. Let's select this one. Let's go to animation. So every time I select a subject, it gives me options to change it. So everything that I animated within the in category happens and then it stops. In the looping category, it happens throughout the entirety of my duration. So you'll see there the background happens and it stops, but everything else just sort of keeps spinning and it keeps going, right? And the same goes for the title that, that sort of just stopped. Okay, so I like that. I like that the way that has been animated, but maybe I want some of these effects to come in later. So that's when we can enter this space right here. It's called edit timeline. So let's go into the edit timeline. You can see there we have our own timeline within Adobe Express. And within it, we have a few things we can do. So first of all, of course, we can pull the edges to change the duration of this video. So now this might be a lot shorter or a lot longer, right? And that will affect the animations that we created. Without us introducing any keyframes, it's all very automate, automated, which again, it's great for um, marketing if you're trying to save a lot of time and output as much as you, you can possibly, right? So 
we're going to play this and you can see how that all plays within the same timeline. So what I want to do is go into these three little buttons, right? Those little three little buttons. And it says show layer timing. And at first, it doesn't look like much has happened. It says select a layer to adjust the timing. So let's say I select this eye right here. Now that layer is visible. And I can determine whether that layer gets animated at the introduction of my video or maybe somewhere a little bit later. And you can see here, everything is animated and the eye comes in a little bit later. And that could be the same for Transformation Mondays. Or let's say that Photoshop logo right here. I want to animate it around there. Perhaps you're animated animating to music, right? We all um, have this really cool uh, library on our social platforms now of music. So you might want to be able to kind of match those cues and introduce those graphics at, at a certain point in your duration. So that's the way you want to do it. Again, you have to select a graphic or a layer in order to have that visibility. At first you won't see it, but you select that layer and it becomes accessible, right? So if I select this one, I can say I want it to start there, but I want to hide it maybe there towards the end. So it goes away, right? But actually I don't, I don't think that was, that was quite an, an effect, but maybe for this, this fella right here. I want to introduce it somewhere there. So it feels like it's clicking. So I have this, this arrow uh, graphic. I might want to animate that. Let's see if we have a cool effect that loops, that imitates that click effect. So let's see, it says pulsing. We have the one pulsing, right? So we'll add that there and let's see what it looks like. Let's bring our playhead back. It is such a cool thing to just have these accessibilities and, and know that if you're just entering this world of animation, this is so easy and it makes it less intimidating. It also introduces you to animation in a way that you can adapt those skill sets somewhere else where you can you know, explore uh, animation more in detail, right? Like Adobe Premiere or Adobe Effect, uh, After Effects. You can see there, it does that, that click, that sort of pulsing effect on it, which I think that looks really cool. And so already I'm liking the way that looks. And if I want to, I can begin downloading this file. And in our downloads, I want to make note of something really, really important. Before we were able to download MP4s at about 720p, uh, which as we may be familiar with uh, spaces like Instagram or TikTok, they all accept 1080, which is high definition, HD. If you're posting on YouTube, you have that ability too, or maybe you want um, to export horizontal version at 4K, that's, that's incredible. But we didn't have that option before. And now we do. We have these social platforms that accept high definition and 4K and Adobe Express has listened and now they've made it available for us to also download our designs and our assets and our animations within those parameters too, right? So we can speak to our social platforms in high definition or extra high definition <laughs> essentially and be able to rely on Adobe Express to have that output. So I've been uh, downloading 1080 happily since we're just outputting for social media. Awesome, right? So before we do that, we're not, we're not quite done. We have this section right here. We have add a scene. So the way we're working along this is a little bit com compar compartmentalized that word. I can say um, people's names better than that word. All right. So we're compartmentalizing and in add a scene, we can add new assets. Let's say you didn't have a Photoshop template. We of course know that Adobe Express is king for 
king or queen for um, having templates available, right? So for those of you who want to be able to start from scratch or for those of you who want to be inspired by some really neat templates. So I might want to explore some of these really cool assets here. And in the UI, we have that similar um, that similar UI, um, I would say, organization where all of our assets are on the left hand, left hand side and anything we're creating are on the right hand side. So think of all of this as resources, right? So it, within our resources, we have all of these really neat templates, some of which um, have are specifically for uh, Instagram reels, for TikTok videos, for Instagram stories. So we can begin with a template here. Let's look at some of these Instagram stories here, right? So we can create some of the, or modify some of these different designs with just the template. So let me see, I'm kind of looking here to see what I may like. All right, so let's say I like something, I want something that is uh, headline heavy, right? So more of a headliner. So I might want something like this. Let's say I add this, join us. So it says, do you want to add as a page or do you want to add it as a new project? Kind of want to add it as a page for now. But actually, one of the things that I wanted to show you before our time runs out, which is kind of vital, uh, I want to be able to introduce here, since it is, in fact, video editing, I actually want to introduce a video, right? Let's find our way into video formats. So I'm going to go into media. And like I said before, we have within here our different uh, assets available. We have Adobe Stock available. Uh, we have images that we can upload directly from our computer and we have video and audio. So we have all of these audio, this grand audio library with acoustics, backgrounds, blues, classical music, country, dance. My favorites like hip hop, jazz, something a little bit more chill and the sound. Uh, so it's sort of a background of music. This is a background music here too, so very intentional on that department. I'm going to upload first a video that I have directly inputted here. So let's see. Let's upload, I think I have a video here. Yeah, so I have this video. There you go, this one. All right, so let's import that video. So now this is the video you saw previously. It's um, a simple video I recorded in my previous studio, and it's recorded with my phone, right? So nothing too fancy here, and it's imported, I believe, in like 1080, so I think it's 1080. I think it can go even higher than that. But it's already like a very chill video and I'm able to import it as a secondary scene to my graphic, right? So you can see here, I'm coming in and then I say hello, but I think I want to be able to edit this in. So it ends maybe right about there. So I don't actually exit the scene. Right, so let's change that duration. We can change that duration pretty easily. Cool. And right about there, I want to introduce a um, calling card, right? So we're gonna introduce text. Let's go into text and a really, really, really cool thing that we have now within Adobe Express Beta is that we have uh, text effects. Text effects is essentially working with your prompts to generate a really cool headliner. I mean, we have fonts that are, mu are decorative. We have fonts that are really, really robust. You can actually create something very special here within your text and it's happening. It happens really, really quickly, which I think is awesome. So you can have just like before, you have these previous templates here. So you have 
this one that if you click it, it already gives you an access to that uh, predetermined prompt. So we have pink metallic miler balloon, right? So we can modify it as we go. So let's say join live is what I said earlier. So we're doing that. You can see how that gets updated super fast within that prompt, that particular prompt. So let's say I want to do something like, so text effects back to text effects. Let's say I want to do something a little bit different. So let's use neon, neon, I would say bars, neon bars. And let's make it purple just to go with everything we've been doing so far. Purple. There you go. All right, let's hit generate on that. <laughs> we have Melanie saying, hi, everyone from Los Angeles. <laughs> I hope you're found at some point, Los Angeles. And we have SK Arif from Bangladesh, really, really awesome. All right, so you can see here, we've been able to develop a neon inspire sign. So it has those, I included the word bar because I like seeing those particular details in my neon sign. So you can see there the details of my font. And I mean, it, it developed that really, really quickly and it has, a bit of those shadows uh, to sort of emulate a 3D effect on this font. So it's not, I'm gonna make this caps. I guess I could have just gone in here and made it caps too, by the way. So it looks a little bit better when I do that. Yeah, that looks better. So we have four options, much like in our texture images. We have four options, but we can load more and have more options available based on our prompt. They're going to generate some variety um, along the way, right? So I really like the way that one looks. Let's see this one. And yeah, ooh, that's, that E looks really awesome. I think it's a really interesting place too to, to uh, experiment with the way you approach headlines and text. I think this alone could be a very attention calling element that can within the very, very busy uh, world of social media can be an attention grabber, right? So let's go into our text and let's go back here. We have now our text effect, Im effect inputted, and we can continue to manipulate that. So like I said before, I can choose uh, my text to be completely capital. I can actually go here. I can change the font if I want to as well. Cooper font worked really well. Let's see what it would look like with a bit more of a bold font to see the text effect happen here. And just give it a little minute. All right, there you go. So. You definitely want to choose a font that leaves room for that effect to take place. You don't want to use a really thin font. Thin uh, serif font would be a bit uh, weird. So you want a sans serif font, something condensed, something bold, uh, might work in your, in, your, in your favor. I like using this feature here on text layouts, which is dynamic text. And that's going to make my text super cool here. So like if I go and write join me live, it makes it a little bit more, uh, let me let me do that so I can show it, right? So it makes all of these different options for me, right? So join me live and it's all encapsulated within that uh, text box, which is really cool and it just gives me different varieties. I think I like that one, join me live. I'm holding alt or option to just increase it without the dynamic element changing my uh, layout, the layout of my text. So I'm gonna place it 
right about there. And I think for this one, I'm going to be adding some elements. So I wanted to add some elements on the edges. I think it looks a little bit more put together. It makes it look like my video is framed. And again, uh, back to our designs here, you can see it feels a little bit more welcoming when you have your designs encapsulated within your brand. And sometimes a single graphic can be that link that brings together your your full set, right? Like your full all of your your work on social media. And it makes it look a little bit more complete, right? It stands in as a form of a portfolio for those of you who love expressing your work on social media. I think it's a it's a great key for um, for you to consider to make it branded and more cohesive, right? Videos with a bit of a graphic. So I might introduce a brush here. And you can see it's uploading here and I'm gonna use it right on the edge and I'm gonna change that text effect. I mean, that <laughs> text effect. I'm gonna use that effect and change the color. So let's go to custom and change it to maybe, maybe I can select the color here, something like this. No, that blue's weird. I don't like it. And that's kind of nice. All right, let's do this color here. And I'm just going to hold Alt or Option and select another one and duplicate it to this edge. And now that I have two, I can actually just go ahead and animate it, right? Even though we have a video going on, we can layer all of those cool effects that we can do here on Adobe Express. So we have our, uh, our title and we have our graphics and I want to animate them. So let's go into the animation for each one and let's go into introduction. Ooh, that's cool. Let's use the bungee for that one and make the duration a little bit longer. It balances twice. It comes from the, the top right? That's the direction. All right, let's do the same thing for this one. Let's go into our in bungee. And this one's going to come from the bottom, right? So it's going to go like that, bounces twice, and let's make it a little bit longer. Cool. So let's bring our playhead back and sort of see what that would look like from intro. Okay. Looking cool so far. Awesome. All right, so now we have this text, which we will also like to animate. So we're going to go into animation. Again, just because it's a generated uh, graphic or image, it doesn't mean you can't continue to affect it and make it your own. You actually can continue to change the color, the size, um, and also animate it, right? So we can animate this text, text as well. So let's go here. Let's see if we want something like... Let's go back to animation. Mm, I don't think I want pulse. Let's see what we have here. We have wiggle. We have, no, not spin. Let's not do that. Breathe. We have that yo-yo one. The yo-yo is really cool. And let's bring in the speed. Nice, so it's a little bit more attention grabbing. Now with the video, it was directly outputted from my phone. I want to be able to adjust it. So there's a bit more contrast here. And so I'm able to do that too, which is sometimes I just want a little bit of contrast, a little bit of a change in hue. So I'm gonna uh, warm it up a little bit here. The output of a phone video is often very uh, very cold, so on the blue side, so I like to warm it up a little bit. And sometimes the blacks are not exactly strong, so depending on the light conditions. So I might want to bring that down, bring that up, and bring the shadows down. And already that image, that video image, looks a little bit more, more elegant because it has that color texture and it adds up to everything else I have in this image, right? I mean, in this, in this scene. So we have that, really cool. So I am looking at it and I'm thinking, I don't quite like the order. 
of ops here, I think this one should come first. So I'm actually going to just click and drag and that changes the organization. So now this will come first. Let's hit play there. Awesome. Hi, and then I that might be a little too long, so let's change the duration. And it goes into Transformation Mondays. Ooh, sweet. So that already looks so cool, right? We're able to import a video, create really text, really cool text headliners with text effects. We're able to manipulate a PSD file and bring in a brand new image into our backgrounds, into our abstract patterns with text to image, right? And we're also able to have our own timeline to edit and manipulate the, the design assets or the video assets that we output out to our social networks. <laughs> oh, Alessandra says, I like this font. I know I actually use this font quite often. Um, you're referring to this one. It's really good for text effects. It's called Aso Sans Uber. So it's kind of a hard one to forget, right? So I am definitely really into this. And you can see the variation that I created here is really cool. And a similar variation was outputted on social. And you can see how, <laughs> how that develops. Oh, and I created a final out card. So you will know that we were talking about Adobe Express. So in my case, this, this makes complete sense for my expression, what I'm trying to share online, what I'm trying to promote online. Whenever you're promoting your work or things of that nature, that could be really cool for you to uh, look into Adobe Express as an assistant to developing your video assets now, which is just awesome because Honestly, if I wasn't able to download at such a high quality, it wouldn't feel as professional. It wouldn't feel as um, uh, as possible for me to share online. But it's a game changer, in my opinion. And all of these different animations, animating more than one asset is definitely a really cool um, element that I love using. And so I find myself using it quite a lot for all of my different thumbnails. You can see here how they look on my designs and even on my, my uh, YouTube channel. You can see all of the different covers. I am able to create them and develop them and share them online. And that looks super, super awesome. So hopefully y'all felt you know, inspired because honestly, one of my favorite things to do here is introduce different tools for us to really um, evolve our umbrella of skill sets. It's really powerful to have um, different skill sets within your belt. It's been beneficial to me and hopefully it will be of an asset to you as you continue to learn here on Adobe Live and continue to explore different things. Of course, check out our my work and also keep up with the latest streams on Senlagos slash classes and keep up with my um, longer lessons on Skillshare where um, I now have a new class and it's focused on mobile filmmaking. So very, very much focused on those of us who love using our phones as um, a generator of photos, of videos, and we love telling stories online. So thank you all for being here. This has been an incredible uh, second episode of Transformation Mondays. I am so happy to be here again, and I'll see you on the next one.